there's a vast difference between commandments and law. Commandments always hail from God. Laws are human made and human beings are vulnerable. Moolam samiksha yatra gamyata sarvesha margam tadhaiva pravarthi Moolam samiksha yatra gamyata sarvesha margam tadhaiva pravarthi Sisters and brothers, a very hearty welcome to each one of you to the 22nd Sunday of the liturgical year in the ordinary time. One of the most constantly discussed themes both in spirituality and psychology is about the dichotomy of exteriority and interiority. In the recent times I happened to read a very interesting book titled Inwardness written by a famous American author, Jonathan Gannery. In this particular book, which was written in 2021, the author describes this book with a question, asking, what do you see when you look inward? What is the space in which you find yourself when you are journeying interiorly? St. Augustine, whose feast we celebrated a couple of days back, would say, when you travel interiorly, you are entering into a library of memories. Buddhist spirituality would say, we human beings are self-generating beings. We cast the shadow of light when we are entering into our own very selves seeing who we really are. Yes, my brothers and sisters, there is a lot of emphasis given on the importance of interiority today than the external dimensions of our life. Because psychology very clearly finds the externalities need not be in correspondence with one's own interiority and as a result, one need not be joyful when one is still having a lot of external possessions and positions. Are you a person who looks interiorly? Do you travel into yourself and see who you really are? The readings of today, especially the Gospel of the day, invites us to a journey of interiority. Jesus today, through the Gospel of Mark, is presenting before us one of the fundamental aspects of human satisfaction. In fact, a jury is sent from Jerusalem to question Jesus as to why his disciples are not watching their hands before they eat. This gives Jesus the possibility of explaining his life philosophy. You must realize that this question of the scribes is not because that they were wondering about the health hazard that can come into the life of the people, but their whole idea was to stabilize some of their own power positions by keeping the commandments externally, forgetting the spirit of it interiorly. There's a vast difference between commandments and law. Commandments always hail from God. Laws are human made and human beings are vulnerable. They are fragile. As a result, when we insist only on the aspect of the laws, forgetting the aspect of God-given spirit in the law, we would fail to have the meaning of the law. This, in fact, is the challenge that Jesus is putting before them. Quoting the prophet Isaiah, Jesus would say, You are only doing lip service. 
you are not keeping the commandments of God. If we listen to the gospel passage of today, we are reading from the gospel of Mark chapter 7. But from 1 to 7 we read the passage, after that there is a break. But if we connect that passage as well, which is being omitted in the gospel of the day, that is chapter 7 verse 8 onwards, we would clearly see the scrupulosity played by the Pharisees and the scribes of that time. It's all about a particular terminology that is used, known as Korban. What is Korban? Korban means something that is given to God freely. In the context of their own lives, in order to amass the property of even their parents, sometimes the Pharisees used to tell them this property is given as Korban given to God and they used to misuse the property for their own personal interests. This is here that Jesus is now bringing home to them some of the fundamental aspects of the spirit of the law that needs to be understood in their lives. Today in the gospel Jesus clearly mentions to turn towards the interiority. He says all that is evil is coming from inside. Covetousness, theft, murder, lie, evil, immorality. All these are emerging from the interiority of a person. That's precisely the reason we see the difference of the approach of the Old Testament from that of the New Testament. For example, in the Old Testament, when they speak about the aspect of murder, it clearly meant physical mutilation of a body, killing a person. But Jesus says in the New Testament, when you look at your brother and call him a fool, you have already murdered him. It's an attitude of your interiority that leads you to physical action. Think about that concept of adultery. In the Old Testament, it was very clearly understood when two people, illegal manner, come together for a sexual relationship, it was considered to be adultery. But Jesus says, when you look at a woman with lust, you have already committed adultery with her. It's an attitude that makes you to be truly pure or impure. Yes, my brothers and sisters, that's precisely what we read in the first reading of today. From the book of Deuteronomy, Moses tells the people of Israel, listen to the word of God as I command them to you. You shall never delete or add anything to the word of God, but practice it as it is proposed before you. Lift the spirit of the word and not the letter in itself. This is where we are today called to that practice of the interiority. Very often I ask myself the question, are we merely possessing a tag of Christianity or are we really Christians? What is that litmus test that we need to prove ourselves to be Christian? It is the mark of our love for God and for the other. Love of God and love of neighbor. And this aspect of the love of God and love of neighbor comes through personal practical commitment that we make towards God and humanity. This is not merely an external action, but an action that emerges from interior conviction. I love God. As a result, I serve the humanity. That's why in the second reading today, from the letter of St. James, we hear a very important statement. True religion that is pure and unstained will always be able to give itself to the other. Come to the aid of the orphans 
and visit the widows in their distress. Remain always away from the stain of the world. And that is where the interior dimension of the human being is getting highlighted. Unfortunately, my sisters and brothers, although my statement might look a bit external and a bit pessimistic, I would say most of us are unfortunately affected by the exterior actions than interior convictions. Sometimes I used to wonder when I go to a cemetery, my God, what all decorations do we make on a tomb? Costly mosaic stones are laid there, but what is there inside? Decayed mortal remains of human beings with perhaps the bones and the skull left behind. We make palatial homes, but we need to ask the question, do we have joy and peace in this luxury lifestyle? Yes, what is necessary today is to follow the spirit of the love of God as given by Jesus today through the gospel. We are not meant for mere external expressions, but actions that emerge from convictions through interior lifestyle is the one that makes you and me Christians today. I always look at the traffic police. A traffic police can stand there with an idea, I need to catch everyone who is making a mistake. But in the spirit of the law, he is someone who is supposed to be helping the traffic to flow in a smooth manner so that there is no disorder happening there. Yes, my brothers and sisters, today the Lord is inviting us to have that sense of interiority. Your external actions should emerge from interior convictions. Do you journey interiorly? Amen. Mulam Samiksha Yatra Gamyata Sarvesha Maga Tadaiva Gravati